today's video, we're going to be talking about my favorite topic, Commodore, specifically the Commodore 64 computer. And even more specifically, how many of these things did Commodore sell? The numbers we're going to be using, their internal sales reports, their annual reports. I'm going to summarize that, give you all the data, keep a running total, and hopefully by the end of this, we learn something. So sit back, relax, and let's have some fun. I like to keep my videos moving fast and not waste your time, but we need to get one thing out of the way before we dive in. Calendar year versus fiscal year. A company's fiscal year they use for accounting and reporting doesn't always line up with the calendar year. Commodore's fiscal year ran from July 1st through June 30th. It's important to understand this because the primary source of data we'll be using will be Commodore's annual reports to shareholders that were published annually at the completion of each fiscal year. Here's Commodore's 1982 fiscal year. We know the Commodore 64 began reaching consumers in July or August of 1982. As you can see, that happened after Commodore's 1982 fiscal year ended. We should therefore not expect to see anything in Commodore's 1982 annual report to shareholders about Commodore 64 unit sales volume. Indeed, on page 7 of the 1982 annual report, we learn that the C64 began shipping in July of 1982. That's it. By the way, that 1982 annual report was sent to me by Michael Tomchak. Thank you, Michael. Next up, the 1983 annual report to shareholders. To set expectations, the annual reports aren't going to provide exact numbers in a spreadsheet for us. They're just gonna provide summary details using round numbers. So what does the 1983 annual report tell us? Well, as I said, round numbers. Commodore flexes the VIC-20 numbers a bit. By January 1983, more than one million VIC-20s had been sold. Now we find out the Commodore 64 is rapidly moving toward that level. So, by June 30, 1983, just about a year after the C64 started shipping, it hadn't yet sold 1 million units. We'll later derive from the 1986 annual report that this number is closer to 500,000 units, so I've made the running total reflect that. This 1983 annual report was sent to me by Don Greenbaum, by the way. Thank you, Don. Moving on, what can we learn from Commodore's 1984 annual report to shareholders? Nothing. There's not a single mention of C64 unit sales in the 1984 annual report. Don't worry, that doesn't mean we don't have any data. Another document that the former treasurer of Commodore International, Don Greenbaum, sent to me is this international bank presentation that Commodore put together in June of 1984. Commodore provided this presentation to bankers they were hoping to borrow money from. If we turn to page 49 of this report, we see that Commodore claims cumulative Commodore 64 sales of just under 3 million units. So from July 1982 through June 1984, the first two years on the market, the C64 sold just under 3 million units. The data we have available to us up to this point only tells us that less than 1 million in FY83 and a total of 3 million by the end of FY84. The FY86 report will clarify that 2.5 million units were sold in FY84, so I'll keep the running total at the bottom accurate. Let's not jump into the 1985 annual report just yet. Another bonanza among the giant box of internal Commodore documents documents that Don Greenbaum sent to me was this, the supporting work papers for Commodore's 1986 financial plan. And you can see from the table of contents that the very first section provides us with details about product sales in 1984 and 1985. If we turn to page three, here are unit sales for Commodore products for calendar year 1984-1985. Remember, we already counted fiscal year 1984, so Q1 and Q2 of calendar year 1984 were already counted as Q3 and Q4 of fiscal year 1984. Fiscal year 1985 will include Q3 and Q4 of calendar 1984 and Q1 and Q2 of calendar 1985. Confusing, huh? I'll tidy things up here just for the sake of clarity. Now, if we add up all of the numbers here, the total is 1,958,800 Commodore 64 computers sold in fiscal year 1985. Just out of curiosity, what does the 1985 annual report say? Here on page 5, it tells us 5 million Commodore 64s have been sold, which matches up with our running total. Moving right along to fiscal year 1986, we're going to skip detailed reports and go straight to the annual report, so this doesn't get too boring. I can tell you that the numbers do match up. On page 13 of the 1986 annual report, we learned two things. One, Commodore combined C64 and C128 numbers in their annual reports as a single product group. My wording in the running total at the bottom of the screen was intentional. The Commodore 64 family of computers will include the total units sold of Commodore 64 and 128. 
two, Commodore sold a combined 1.9 million units in fiscal year 1986. Last thing, if you read the second sentence on this page, you'll see the FY86 clarifying information I was referring to earlier in FY83 and FY84. Unit sales of the C64 were 2.5 million in 1984. Moving on to Commodore's 1987 annual report to shareholders. In this report, we learned that the installed user base for the 64 128 product line is some 7 million worldwide? The 1985 report listed the user base at 5 million. The 1986 report added 1.9 million units, which brought our total to 6.9 million at the end of FY86. Something isn't right if by the end of FY87 the total is 7 million units. That would mean they only sold 100,000 units in FY87. As it turns out, they seem to have used the FY86 numbers when they generated the FY87 report. Once we look at FY88, it'll make more sense. On to 1988. The rest of the reports we look at in this video all came from microfiche instead of high quality scans of the original, so I apologize for how dreadful this looks. Anyway, if we turn to page 4, we'll understand the error from the 1987 report. Here we go. C64, C128D computers, yada yada yada, installed base of over 9 million units. Okay, that's good. We left off FY87 with 7 million units. Here's what shows the error in FY87. Only a million units were sold in FY88, not 2 million. So FY87 should have listed 8 million units total with 1.1 million units sold in that fiscal year. 1989, and I apparently lied to you, I do have a high quality scan of the FY89 annual report, but this is definitely the last one. We'll turn to page 3 for the goods in the FY89 report, and we find that sales of Commodore C64 slash C128D product line declined moderately during the year. The installed base is now shown to exceed 10 million units. Then we see that once again over 1 million units were sold in FY 1989. Here we have Commodore's 1990 annual report to shareholders. We'll find the information we're after on page 8 of this report. This year, we're told the installed base is nearly 11 million machines, with 700,000 units sold in FY90. Nearly, here, means they're rounding up by 300,000 units, but as I said earlier, we should expect to find round estimates here, not exact numbers. Also, notice that the C128 is no longer listed here, having been discontinued. The Commodore 64 continued to march onward, though. Moving right along here, we're into FY 1991 now, and on the very first page of this fiscal year's annual report, we find the C64 family continues to be the most popular computer ever sold, and that there's now approximately a 12 million unit installed base. That would mean they sold another million in FY 1991. I tend to believe the word approximately here is being used very generously. In fact, the FY93 report will reveal actual unit sales of 800,000 in FY91. I removed the 300,000 roundup from last fiscal year and used the actual unit sales of 800,000 for FY91, making our running total at the bottom reflect 11.5 million instead of the approximately 12 million shown in this report. I have to skip the FY92 report because I've never been able to source Commodore's FY92 annual report in any form. If you have a copy, let me know in the comments. At any rate, no need to be nervous because the data we need for FY92 is contained in the FY93 report anyway. It'll require me to read things out of order so we can keep our running total accurate. Compared with 650,000 units in fiscal 1992, we ended FY91 at the 11.5 million unit sales mark. An additional 650,000 in FY92 will bring our running total up to 12,150,000. Here's Commodore Swan Song, the FY93 annual report released at the conclusion of the 1993 fiscal year, so sometime after July 1993, is the last annual report Commodore ever released. They did not survive fiscal year 1994. So, the numbers shown here for FY93 of 200,000 are the last unit sales numbers Commodore released for the C64. That brings our grand total to 12,350,000 total unit sales for the Commodore 64 and Commodore 128 combined over the lifetime of the company. That's everything I have for you. I'll leave this summary up here while I close us out. I want to make a couple points in closing. 
First, I've been reading for years that in the 1993 annual report, it states 17 million C-64s were sold and 4.5 million C-128s were sold. It's simply not true. The only C-64 sales numbers that are surfaced in the 1993 annual report are the ones you saw in this video. There is no mention whatsoever of the C-128 in the FY93 report, historical otherwise. I'll put a link to a PDF copy of the FY93 annual report in the description so you can read it yourself. During the years when the C-128 was being sold, a total of 5 million combined C-64 and C-128s were sold. If we assume the unit sales were split evenly, which they weren't, but we'll assume that, that would mean the Commodore 128 sold a total of 2.5 million units over its lifetime. I feel like these numbers might seem like they're controversial just because they're so different from estimates we've been given over the years since Commodore's demise, but they shouldn't. I presented the numbers here in Commodore's own words using the numbers Commodore themselves were providing on a year-after-year -year basis. We saw that Commodore had an error in their FY87 numbers, so maybe there are other errors in the data they provided. I just don't know. What I do know is that this Commodore 64 absolutely fulfilled Jack Trammell's mantra of computers for the masses, not the classes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Thank <music> you.